Hello, my name is Moritz Kuhn and I'm a professor of economics at the University of Bonn. Today, I want to give you a short introduction into my latest research with Gaspar Ploy on job stability, earning dynamics and life cycle savings. What we are starting from in this paper is the observation that labor markets are characterized by large heterogeneity in job stability. What do I mean by that? We see some workers that have very stable lifetime jobs, while others are trapped in employment unemployment cycles. What we want to ask in this paper is, what are the consequences of such heterogeneity for life cycle earnings, wealth and welfare? What we do is we first go to the data of the survey of consumer finances and document the relationship between job stability and wealth accumulation. Then we provide a theory where we develop a life cycle model to explore the consequences of heterogeneity and unemployment risk. In the final step, we ask about a secular trend that is observed in the US labor market, namely the consequences of the decline in US labor market dynamism. What do we find? We find a very systematic positive relationship between job stability, for which our preferred measure is employer tenure, and wealth accumulation. Our model that we calibrate to the US economy is consistent with a wide range of life cycle effects on earnings, consumption, and wealth dynamics. When we then look at the individual level, what we find is that a bad start to the labor market, meaning you have an unstable job at age 25, leaves permanent scars on earnings, consumption, and wealth for your entire life. At the macroeconomic level, we look at this decline in labor market dynamism and actually find that this decline in dynamism led to a welfare gain for young American workers. One more word about heterogeneity and job stability. This year is the tenure by age for American workers. So you see on the horizontal axis, age, and on the vertical axis, tenure in years. What you see now, if you look at a 40-year-old worker, is that mean tenure in the US labor market is eight years, while median tenure is still six years. So on average, jobs are very stable. If we now take what we refer to here as a representative worker, meaning we just employ everybody with average transition rates in the labor market, then we find that mean tenure is only three years at age 40 and much lower than what we observe in the data. That, as we explained in the paper, is a strong, is strong evidence for large heterogeneity in job stability. If we then look at the relationship between job stability that, as I said before, we measure with employer tenure, then we find that wealth to income ratios that we show here on the vertical axis and tenure are highly correlated. I also argued before that tenure is increasing with age. So this might be also due to a life cycle effect. So what we can do is we can just control for age effects, but still we find a very robust positive correlation between age and wealth to income ratios. Although you see now that at low tenure, there's a slight non-linearity and non-monotonicity of tenure and wealth to income ratios. As I'm going to argue later, this is exactly what we should expect based on economic theory. If you further control for education, occupation, and industry of workers, we still find this relationship to be robust. We now develop our life cycle model of job stability, where we combine a standard consumption saving model with risk averse agents with a frictional labor market model. In the model, there's on the job search and endogenous human capital accumulation. And that's the important part, two dimensional heterogeneity of jobs. Jobs differ in the wages and their separation rates. And if I'm now going to talk about unstable jobs, I mean a job with a high separation rate that we put at the 75th percentile of the age-specific separation rate distribution. Similarly, for a stable job, 
we, talk, we take jobs that are at the 25th percentile of the age-specific separation rate distribution. So now about the intuition of how the model translates heterogeneity in job stability in consumption saving dynamics. First, think about an unstable job. So now we have residualized, meaning controlling for observables, tenure, and the wealth to income ratio on the vertical axis. So if you're now in an un unstable job, you start accumulating precautionary savings because you know that at some point you're going to lose your job. If you have lost your job, which is now the red line where your tenure is going to go to zero, then you start decumulating assets over time as your income is low during unemployment. And then once you have found a new job again, you start accumulating precautionary savings. This circling here through unstable employment is what we refer to as a Sisyphus cycle of wealth accumulation. If you now think about a stable job, the stable job accumulates immediately life cycle savings because the worker does not have to decumulate due to unemployment because it's a very unlikely event. And then this worker immediately engages into life cycle consumption smoothly. This is what we call a Molliani saver because there's this dominating life cycle savings motive. If we now think about the earnings dynamics, we can again compare a work in an unstable and a stable job. So now we have age on the horizontal axis and human capital on the vertical axis. In the model, we assume which we think is realistic that workers cannot accumulate human capital while they are unemployed. So if workers are on an unstable job trajectory, then they are going to accumulate human capital for some period, but then there's going to be a period of unemployment where they cannot accumulate human capital. And then later on, if they accumulate again, a little bit of human capital, they might be still forced to stop their human capital accumulation because they are going to be unemployed again. So there's less earnings growth over the life cycle. By contrast, if we look at a stable job, then they, we see this constant accumulation of human capital and high earnings growth over the life cycle. We think of these two types of jobs as what people refer to sometimes as dead end jobs with little perspective, with little earnings growth, with little progression over the life cycle and stable lifetime jobs in the case of um, a stable job to begin with. Now, what are the individual consequences of job stability? Here, I just show you the case of income. So if we now take two workers in our model and just make them identical, except for initial job stability. And here we take an unstable job and a stable job following the definition that I just gave you. If we now look at what is going to happen, if we only vary initial job stability, we find that even 25 years later, consumption and income, here I'm only showing you income, are going to be persistently lower over the entire working life. So initial differences in job stability translate into persistent life cycle effects. And in the case of earnings, the job stability heterogeneity perpetuates short run search frictions. And you might therefore think about this as a source of dynamic frictional wage dispersion. Finally, thinking about declining labor market dynamism, there is an ongoing debate about what caused this decline in labor market dynamism. We are not thinking about the causes, but about the consequences. In the data, what has been documented is a secular decline in separation and job-to-job -job rates in the US labor market. At the same time, and probably surprisingly, median tenure remained constant over time. What we now do in the model is we match these two facts, declining separation rates and declining job-to-job -job rates, and at the same time, median tenure is supposed to remain constant. This is feasible in our model because we have this heterogeneity in job stability. So what are now the different potential consequences? The lower separation rates are good for workers because they lead to better opportunities to invest in human capital. 
Lower job to job rates work in the opposite direction because they reduce workers' opportunities to climb the wage ladder. So there should be lower wage growth from lower job to job rates. In total, what we find is that for the, that there is a welfare gain of about 1.6% for labor market entrants, so for young American workers. So what do we conclude? There, empirically, there's large heterogeneity in job stability in the US labor market. We find in the survey of consumer finance data a very systematic relationship between job stability and wealth accumulation. The model tells us that a bad start to the labor market leaves long lasting scars on income, consumption, and wealth. Job stability heterogeneity perpetuates short run search frictions and leaves long lasting scars on workers' careers. And finally, we find that declining labor market dynamism led actually to a welfare gain of young American workers. I hope this short introduction to our paper caught your interest and would be extremely happy if you go download the paper and take a more closer look at all the additional results and discussion that we provide in the paper. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to receiving any comments, feedback and suggestions. Thank you very much.